Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Robert Koning, a serial entrepreneur as well as an investor. Uh, I have my own company, VC Ventures, GmbH in, uh, in Germany, and support uh, young entrepreneurs in finding their way to a successful business. Um, yeah, this webinar, it's all about markets, um, where to find uh, uh, the proper markets, do I find the right one, um, what is the definition, how do I need to define my market, etc, uh, etc. Et so, uh, yeah, thank you very much for, for listening to this. Um, just a little introduction into the, uh, into the topic markets. Uh, market analysis is one of the most important parts of, uh, of any startup strategy. Um, do it right uh, and have a clear idea on the way to go. Uh, that is very important to become a successful entrepreneur. Um, a good market analysis will enable you to convince uh, investors, uh, potential partners, and if you are looking for a, a co uh, founder, then it's always important to uh, for him or her to know, hey, this, this person knows what he is talking about and he knows about which market he, uh, he tries to approach. So that's very important. Most importantly, of course, uh, it's about customers. Uh, the customer also needs to know and needs to be aware of that you are, uh, yeah, you are knowing his market where he is, uh, he's moving in. Um, so bear in mind before uh, starting on a detailed uh, market analysis um, that the reasons can be uh, can be very different to do so, um, and you may be creating business plans um, and strategies for different reasons uh, or different audiences. Um, for example, if you already have a small business and you know your customers very well, um, well spending time on a, on a detailed market analysis is perhaps not the way uh, to go forward because you know your customers already. Um, if it's an internal plan and you just need uh, the industry data, uh, it might also be, uh, be not necessary to go in depth into the market analysis whereby a running business you always need to check what's going on in the market, but that'll be discussed in a different webinar uh, about competition. Um, so yeah, be sure uh, to assess the value of all the information uh, to make sure you do the right market analysis and you have the right data uh, well, to do the right decision-making processes. Um, if you're seeking funding, uh, market analysis is going to be a key success factor um, for uh, investors because an investor really wants to know uh, the market you're moving in, you're approaching, how big is it, what's the volume, what could be your market share, what's the competitor landscape, etc, etc. Um, so well, with that said, let's explore uh, the details of writing a, a market analysis. And what is a market analysis? And I'll use an example later on uh, to show you the steps to be taken uh, to do it. Uh, so at the end of this webinar, uh, there will be 12 steps explained on uh, what you need to do and it gives you a guideline on, uh, on how, to, uh, how to do it. Um, but in this introduction uh, I, I will go uh, a little bit into, uh, into depth. Uh, market analysis is nothing magical. Um, it's really exactly what, it's, what it sounds like. Um, it's determining uh, the, the characteristics uh, unique to your particular market um, and an analyzing this information uh, which will help you to make the right decision on your business. Um, by conducting a market analysis, uh, you will be able to gather valuable data um, that will help you to get to know your customers, uh, determine the appropriate pricing, and that's also a very important issue to pricing. Uh, don't make a mistake on that. Um, analyzing the information, uh, which, uh, well, which will help you uh, to make the right decisions. Know your competitors, uh, and figure out uh, the weaknesses they might have or the weaknesses you have. Um, so yeah, that's uh, said, uh, that having said, uh, if you're writing a business plan to start up a new business, um, I told you before, um, looking into investors or a bank to support uh, your financing uh, needs, um, it'll be absolutely uh, necessary to do it properly. So that is one thing I can, uh, I can advise uh, advise you to do. Um, the market analysis is not just uh, one part of a successful business plan 
Um, it's one of the best reasons to write one. Um, but anyway, it's, 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 uh, it's not the only one. A market analysis can be a, a measuring stick. Uh, for example, you use over time to see how far you've come and it allows you to make projections uh, based on data uh, rather than just uh, guessing guessing uh, on uh, on the markets you uh, you are in um, because you know the size uh, of the mountain we always explain uh, the market is a mountain you need to climb um, and you know exactly how high it is uh, then you can determine uh, on on how to approach it etc etc to prevent uh, problems uh, in the future so what do you want to include uh, in the market analysis. Your market analysis should include an overview of your business, a look at your target market, um, an analysis uh, of your competition, uh, your own projections for your business, um, and any regulations you need to comply with. Um, just a quick overview on, on, on the topics I just mentioned. Um, the overview of the industry. This is where you'll discuss the current state of your inter industry, overall and where it's headed. Um, relevant industry metrics like size, trends, um, life cycle, projected growth, something uh, which, is, which is important, not that you're in a market which is not having any growth, uh, especially for uh, the search for investors, uh, that's an important issue and it should all be included in the, uh, in the industry uh, overview. Um, this will let banks, investors, as I said before, see that you know what you're doing and have uh, that you've done your homework and are prepared uh, to start uh, your business and be successful. Um, the second one was the target market, as I said. Um, in this industry section of your market analysis, um, you were able to look at the general scope. Um, in this section, this specific one, uh, you've got to be specific. Um, it's important to establish a clear idea of your target market uh, and a lot of new entrepreneurs make the mistake of thinking that everyone is their potential uh, market, but put it simply, uh, they're not. Uh, in the next slides, I will give you uh, also some examples of what I, what I meant by that. It's a good thing to narrow down your top customers, especially if the, uh, if the, uh, the budget is reduced. Um, you want your marketing budget to be spent efficiently and if you know exactly your top one customer uh, in a specific uh, customer segment in the market then uh, you will be very efficient and you, you don't spend money uh, on customers which you probably won't get anyway or which are very hard to get. So by doing so you will able to uh, direct your marketing budget uh, efficiently and attracting loyal customers. Um, who will spread the word about your business. Um, the target market section of your business plan uh, should include the following, uh, the personas, uh, the user characteristics, um, as well as the market size. Uh, the competitive analysis should be in there, um, and competitive analysis, um, which will be explained in, a, in another webinar, and, and I will go into detail about that. But for example, if you are talking about um, cars, uh, whoever imagined that Google car uh, would be uh, on the market soon, or Apple starts manufacturing cars, uh, think about Amazon um, being the largest uh, book online store. And now nowadays it's the biggest online store as well as the biggest cloud service provider. So these, these things you need to, uh, to, um, to be aware of. And, uh, and check. So a little little uh, um, um, section on how to acquire the data. That was a question I often get, but how do I get the data for the market analysis? Um, they vary from industry to industry, um, but also uh, very hard uh, to get often. But if you are looking into internet, uh, if you go into the online world, uh, you will find a lot of data on a specific industry section. Uh, go to the competitor, uh, they might have uh, yearly, yearly um, reports, um, ask your customer if you already have one. Um, so there are different ways of, of getting, um, getting the, uh, the data acquired which you need. Um, in the next slide 
I will tell you a little bit more uh, on the definition of your market um, and what to take care of. Um, the market definition can be defined as B2B, business to business, um, business to consumer, uh, non-physical markets, if you talk about uh, media, for example, uh, or financial markets, stocks and bonds, etc. Um, the B2B business, some characteristics, B2B markets, they are more complex decision making uh, than the B2C. Um, B2C characteristics, um, if you talk about that, consumers um, are different in that they demand a variety of distribution channels. Um, for convenience, B2B markets are, are different. Um, that's often go to the, the person in charge and find out what are the decision makers uh, so that you can target this market. Um, consumers are less likely to be interested in a, in a very long marketing message. Um, they want to get you to get you right to the point. Um, and customers, uh, consumers, sorry, uh, don't want to work uh, to understand your benefits. They just want to understand in one sentence what you're doing. Um, so focus on the results and the benefits uh, uh, that the product or service uh, will bring to the consumer market and you will uh, uh, make sure uh, that, the, uh, that, the, that the consumer markets are understanding uh, what you're doing. Um, so the next slide um, is just an example on a market definition um, for a cross-country ski uh, manufacturer. Um, this is uh, an example to show you uh, the difference is how you can look at your market size and look at the market share uh, you are having. Um, defining this is important for the next steps you're going to do. Do you want to target a worldwide market? Do you want to target a regional market? For example, in this one, uh, the cross country ski, uh, they said, well, we are uh, the market leaders. Um, they meant market leaders in Switzerland because they had 90% of a market share in the European market, it was 5%. Um, if you go worldwide, it was 2%. If you take this market, not just a cross country ski market, but also um, the ski as such, um, there was only a 25% market share in Switzerland. Um, so the question what you will have is, what is the right market? Um, and this, this question, there is no clear answer. Uh, you need to define a, a certain market share where you say the company um, in this market is successful and can be uh, remaining or can remain successful uh, in this particular market. So that's a rule of thumb. Company should choose a market. It's written on this slide uh, so it can be successful uh, to position itself against, uh, against competition on the long term. Um, the next slide is a slide which just shows you uh, it's a German slide, but anyway, it's a product life cycle uh, uh, over time. So on the on the vertical, uh, you will find the market size. On the horizontal, it's the time. Um, if you are targeting a market which is already existing very long, um, if you have a product uh, which is not very innovative, um, if, if, for example, a shampoo, you're generating a new shampoo, uh, the market will, will probably uh, be uh, mature. Um, so you need to know, do I need to target the people who are already buying? Is it a mass market or do I have a very innovative product? Then you will start at the beginning. Uh, you will target innovators. You will target early adapters. Uh, so you need to be aware of where you step in into a certain, uh, into a certain market. So know how know how your particular market looks like. Um, the customer at the end of the life, uh, life cycle are the worst ones uh, because they cannot decide, uh, they always doubt. The next slide, um, it's another uh, projection um, um, of the, the, the life cycle. Um, yeah, the customer at the end, as I said, are the diffi most difficult. If you look at this, uh, as this graph, you start at the beginning, you do a market entry, um, you start to grow, uh, you get saturated, you get in a mature market, you have a mature product, um, then all of a sudden you, you notice that it's saturated, uh, perhaps competition is, uh, is coming, and then normally uh, what you should do is buy 
generating new products or new versions or a new type, uh, you can start uh, this process all over again so that you are uh, sure that uh, you can survive into these markets. An example um, of this is uh, is in the next slide. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, for example, Nivea. Nivea started with a hand cream uh, and then they, they noticed, okay, this market is saturated. Uh, we cannot get any more market share. The volume uh, is, uh, is not giving any growth, so we need to change our products. So what did they do? Uh, they just added some water and some other uh, components and, and there was a lotion uh, coming out. So Nivea did a product innovation uh, and by that they had a, a variance in, uh, in, 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 in the products and they, uh, they made sure that the growth was, um, was there. Um, the next slide shows you some uh, market analysis components. Um, yeah, I just wrote down um, the components you need to. Uh, yeah, you need to t to, to look into. Um, I can explain some of them, uh, like a market size, uh, the size of the market that can be evaluated uh, based on present sales or percent potential sales. If you use the product, uh, um, were expanded. The following are some uh, information sources to determine the market size. And uh, I touched base on that already, but I just uh, want to repeat this. Uh, it's, for example, governmental data, trade associations, uh, financial data from the major players can be used, um, which, are, which are presenting their yearly figures, customer surveys, or, as I said, uh, the online uh, sites, the Internet, uh, will also provide you some, uh, some uh, data, which is important to define the volume. Uh, you are you are going into the market growth rate uh, simply means of forecasting uh, the market growth rate is to uh, extrapolate uh, historical data into the future uh, while this method may provide a first order estimate um, it does not predict important turning points but still it gives you uh, a good indication of how the market is growing uh, a better method uh, to study growth drivers uh, are such as demographic, demographic information uh, and sales growth in complementary products or look at your uh, competitor and see uh, what their growth is and uh, take that as, as, as a market growth uh, rate. The market profitability. Different firms in a market will have different levels of profitability, absolutely. Um, the average potential uh, for a market can be used as a guideline uh, for knowing how difficult it is to make money in that market. Um, Michael Porter, uh, which is also explained uh, in the webinar uh, following um, about competition. Uh, Michael Porter devised a useful framework for evaluating the attractiveness um, of an industry or a market. Um, this framework, known as the Porter's Five Forces, um, identifies five factors which influence the market profitability. And if you want to know more, um, as I said, the webinar about competition is explaining this a bit more in detail, but uh, in the internet, there is a lot of information about the Porter's five forces. Um, the five forces are the buying power is one of them, supplier power, the barriers to entry, um, the threat to substitute products, uh, competition uh, amongst uh, companies in the industry, and the industry cost structure. Um, and as I said, look in the internet for the Porter Five Forces. Uh, you will get explained a lot about it or look at the webinar, uh, as I said, about competition. Um, taking a cost structure view, um, the cost structure is important for identifying key factors for success. Uh, to this end, uh, Porter's value chain model is useful for determining uh, where value is added and for isolating uh, the costs. Uh, the cost structure is also very helpful for formulating strategies uh, to develop a competitive advantage, which is, of course, important for your success in the market. Uh, for example, in some environments, uh, the experience curve effect can be used to develop a cost uh, advantage over the competitor. Distribution channels, um, you can have a look at that, um, analyzing 
analyzing the channels, the various channels which are available. Um, the following aspects of the distribution system uh, is useful in the market analysis. Um, for example, an existing distribution channel can be uh, described uh, by how direct they are to the customer. Uh, you can you look at the trends or emerging channels. Um, there are also new channels which can offer the opportunity to develop a competitive advantage. Um, the market trends might be something uh, which, is, uh, which is important for you. Um, just a little explanation on this. The changes uh, in the market are important. Um, because they often are the source of new opportunities and threats. Um, the relevant trends are, are industry dependent. Uh, by some examples, include changes in price sensitivity, uh, demand for variety, uh, level of emphasis on services and support. Um, regional trends might also even have a relevance uh, for your business model. Key successful uh, key success factors. Um, Key success factors are those elements uh, which are necessary in order to, uh, to firm and achieve its uh, marketing objectives. Uh, a few examples of such factors, um, they include access to essential and unique resources, um, the ability to achieve economies of scale. Um, big companies have a very important uh, success factor, which is the economies of scale. They can scale up their business model by by being big, uh, having advantages, they can they can buy uh, cheap goods uh, because they are they are having a, a huge volume, etc. Uh, etc. Et so take care of the economies of scale and be sure you uh, you analyze this access to distribution channels, uh, technological uh, advantages can be uh, one of these issues. It's important uh, to consider that the key success factors which you are analyzing in the market. Uh, may change over time, um, especially as the product pro progresses through its life cycle. Um, the next slide will tell you something about uh, the customer segmentation. Um, a customer segmentation, and I, t I told you before uh, that if your budget is small or you are or you are in the beginning, you don't have uh, millions of euros to spend on marketing. Um, that is why make sure you do the customer segmentation right and choose uh, your top uh, your top customer um, yeah to have to get the most out of your your marketing budget um, so now you will ask okay how can, how can i define this um, the following is a list which is on the on the on the slide uh, of topics which can be analyzed to assure you find the right segment uh, which where you have the most success. So what is segmentation? Um, you group a market in segments according to specific criteria, uh, which follows and which allows you, uh, and again, uh, the addressing in one or more segments with the dedicated marketing concept. Um, what should it entail? Um, it should entail the total revenue, which is on the top of the list, um, total revenue I told you before how you can how you can uh, get access to data uh, for this um, the potential revenue how much and how big is the market uh, in euros per month um, remember the slide about the skis uh, I was telling that Switzerland has the 90% and worldwide it was only a half a percent um, but in this case get to know this uh, potential revenue in this particular segment. So don't take worldwide as your potential revenue if you only want to focus on uh, on Switzerland in this in this example. Um, reachability, how can I reach the customer? Um, how can he be targeted? And, and, and also knowing where is he? Um, if you have a consumer, you need to know, okay, uh, where can I find him? Where can I speak to him if you need to speak to him? Uh, what is his uh, What is his behavior? Uh, by media. I'll explain a little bit later on media as well. Uh, the needs or problems they face uh, and how much you think this is a need or a problem which is already covered by the competition. Um, it's important to differentiate, especially at the beginning, to differentiate from your competitor. So you need to know uh, where or which problem does he uh, already solve uh, and perhaps put a percentage on there and also put a percentage uh, behind your idea or your product 
or your services. Um, the media use uh, was something I was telling you before. So how and when, especially when, does my customer uh, consume media? Um, is he going into internet? Does he, ha does he read newspapers? Does he look at television, uh, magazines, etc., etc.? Um, the region, take a look at the region. Um, is my customer in a regional uh, uh, area which I can target very easily? Uh, or do I go to a, a country? Or do I go to a uh, to Europe or, or or Americas or whatever or the world? Um, so be sure you uh, you know the, f the the facts on this. The branch and which branch do we are? Which products uh, which are uh, in the market already existing? Uh, number of employees that might be something which is important for you if you go to the B two B market. Knowing how many employees does my customer have? Uh, what kind of an employees does he have? How is how is uh, the ratio there? Are there a lot of managers or a lot of uh, manufacturing people, for example, if you go to manufacturers? Um, another thing I can explain is the decision, or which is very important, is the decision-making person. Um, I have a lot of startups not knowing exactly who is making a decision. They talk to a lot of people, especially in the B2B business. Um, if you talk to, for example, Siemens or, or, or another huge company, um, talking to many people and then not knowing exactly who is the decision maker uh, or, who, or what is the buying center as we call it um, so that you have the right person uh, to talk to and that you know uh, this guy has, has a budget and can spend this amount of money on my product or on my service. Another one which is important is the, is the, is the barriers. Um, what kind of market barriers do I have? or implementation? Do I need a huge implementation process uh, to get my product uh, to this customer? So that is something which is, uh, which is important. Um, as I promised you at the beginning, I have 12 steps uh, which are explaining or which gives you a guidance on how to, uh, how to manage um, a, a market analysis. I won't go into detail. I think there is a lot uh, written on there. Uh, it, it, is, it is 12 steps. If you follow them, you will have a, a proper market analysis. Um, so I will go through that. And uh, yeah, please read uh, the, 12, the 12 steps. And um, yeah, I think uh, that was the end of the, uh, end of the webinar about markets. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and that I could provide you with some guidance on how to, uh, how to do a market analysis and uh, how to become successful. So keep posted on your webinars. As I said, competition is very linked to this one. Uh, so don't forget to look at that. And uh, thank you very much.